Hello, Pritam. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, what about you? I'm good. Uh, thank you. All right. So can you explain, can you tell me something about yourself, your experience, and then we can start the technical discussion on this. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm Pritam. I'm from Varanasi. And uh, so far, I have uh, worked experience uh, in Salesforce as a 3.7 uh, years. Uh, into that, I got opportunity to work upon Sales Cloud, little bit on Service Cloud and Experience Cloud. So in that journey in Sales Cloud, I did work upon four projects. Into that, uh, I had opportunity to work on LWC or a component, uh, batch classes, integration. So uh, so coming to the my uh, roles and respons responsibilities into that, like... Uh, in a, uh, first of all, we started with the stand-up call with the client and we uh, analyzed the requirement, whatever they uh, provide us. After that, we had an internal call with manager. They uh, inform us about the requirement. I gather all the requirement and go through the uh, requirement part from scratch, build the custom solution, whatever they want. After that, uh, go to the unit testing and after finalized we can uh, I uh, post into production deploy into production using change set so that is my day-to-day -day work responsibility in my organization so far all right thank you let's say Let's say you have written a trigger on account object. Okay. Okay. When you are trying to execute it, you are getting so called 101 error. Okay. Yeah. Now you have checked and debugged the code. There is no so called query inside the loop. Okay. What could be the reason why you are getting the so called 101 error in this case? Yeah. So, uh, like you say, uh, there are no any circle queries inside loop. So, in that case, we have to check about, uh, like in the specific queries which we are using, how many records uh, it are fetching from the database. And uh, no, if, if it is about, yes. let's say it is fetching just one record. Okay. One record. I'm not uh, pretty sure about, but uh, in that situation, like uh, there are no local query inside for loop. For that instance, we have to check about. Uh, okay. Okay. Not... No problem. Have you used custom metadata? Yes. I Do we use metadata? So metadata basically we use when we uh, kept some uh, credentials uh, of uh, like in integration we use you know username password even client client ID secret key so that we kept into metadata uh, and metadata as we know we can deploy it so uh, it is very helpful for us to you know uh, whenever the credential change we don't have to change the uh, even whole metadata, we have to change only label of that. So, for that perspective, it is good to use in Salesforce. But client credentials, I can store in uh, uh, name credentials as well. So, uh, like it is, uh, we can store in name credential as well. But you know, custom metadata somewhere we have as an object as well. So, uh, like in that perspective, we can fetch data from database using query on custom metadata. So in that way, it is helpful. What is the difference between custom settings and custom metadata? Okay. So custom setting and custom metadata both are treated as uh, objects, custom object. Uh, but uh, when we're talking over uh, their deployment, so, you know, uh, the metadata are deployable. 
and uh, custom meta custom label is also deployable but there are some set of restriction over there okay and second thing is that custom label uh, are fixed like whatever if we want to you know hard coding some ids and transferring from developer edition or to production or so in that case we have to put that hard coding value in custom level only because it is fixed and then we deploy it into production even yeah. in custom metadata we can change it it is like variable we can change the value can we can we create a pick list field in custom setting i'm not pretty sure about okay don't worry it's okay have you created approval process no not yet okay no problem why do we use queues in salesforce okay so uh, basically you know uh, it is very hectic sometimes to uh, send uh, some uh, like send some permission to <coughs> to individual users uh, so for that if we want to uh, set some permission to set of users we have to you know add all the user in queues after that send that permissions to that queues so in that case it is used in salesforce then what is public group public group public group is also same public group is also used to you know contains multiple users into it and uh, as per our requirement we can share some permissions to multiple users but the difference is that I'm not bit sure on that. Okay. All right. No problem. Uh, we will check that later in the feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have worked on sales cloud, right? Yeah. How 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 you were getting leads in your sales cloud? How are getting leads? Yeah. So were they using leads in the project you were using sales cloud? Were they using leads? Yes, I use lead, lead of okay. this. They, they were creating it manually? Yes, I created it manually. Okay. Can you tell me the difference between data loader and data import wizard? Okay. So, uh, like through data loader, we can uh, <clears throat> export millions of records and, uh, you know, we can uh, perform insert operation absurd operation merge that is the things that is the operations we can do using data loader but using data import with that uh in comparison with data loader we cannot process on millions of record it is something restrict with the record quantity and uh, we can uh like we can uh update a field uh, with the field values. What is the maximum limit we can upload via data loader? Okay, the maximum limit is 50 million. Are you sure? 50 million of records. Are you sure? Yes. And sure. what objects are not supported in data import wizard? So, user object and uh, user campaign and i'm not remembering other object as well okay so these are not used <clears throat> all right have you written test classes yes why I do we write test classes what why do we write test classes Okay, so basically test classes is plays a very important role. If we want to, uh, whatever functionality built either in a text class trigger. Uh, so we have to write, uh, we have to check the our the functionality, what we are written is uh, built the, uh, is like uh, match whatever the requirements. So uh, to check the code quality and uh, the requirement on which we have built that we 
create a test class and it's also role to you know if we want to deploy from one organization like a uh, one addition to another like change uh, developer or to uh, production or UA2 to production for that case as well we have to use test class okay to check the functionality we can we can run the class directly to check the code quality we can go through the class and see the code quality like i don't know how how test class is helping us to uh, uh, which we cannot do otherwise okay so you know in test classes uh, there are uh, some uh, foundation like if we check uh, either we are code or working or find in such a way like we set <coughs> sorry we set uh, like I'm forgetting there are some uh, specific method which are specially used in cell, uh, test classes to uh, like true case of uh, false case like if our condition is matching the requirement that is, or right. Not. That is yes. right that is not my question if I have a good tester, I can give him all the scenarios and he'll be able to test it. Right? Yes. So if I have tester already, why why Salesforce is forcing us to write the test classes? Because through test classes, we can validate what we write. Like if we, uh, we want to... Otherwise, okay. Can, can, we, can, we can also validate it otherwise, right? Let's say I have written a trigger on account, on account creation. I will create another account manually and we'll be able to check if that trigger is working or not. Bulk scenario, negative scenario, everything I can check. Yeah. Right? So, so how can we check like bulk scenario for bulk scenario? I, think I, will, we up have... I will upload to 2000 accounts via data loader. Yes. Okay. In production also, it will work like that, right? In production, yes. we'll check the test classes, right? It will work. Yes. So you don't know this. Okay, no problem. I'll, I'll tell you. What is multi-tenant environment? So multi-tenant environment is like uh you know, Salesforce is a multi-tenant environment, like multiple people uh around their work Salesforce with the you know same server. So uh it's like it's like a multiple environment, multiple users works on a specific server. And uh, it is built in such a way like nobody can, you know, uh, see the other's private information. So it is a multi-tenant information as I understand. Okay. What is platform as a service? Do you know what is platform as a service? And is Salesforce an example of platform as a service? So, like, for, as I understand, like Salesforce behave as both platform as a service and software as a service. So, uh, platform as a service, we say uh, there are some examples like Heroku are there. It behave as a platform as a service. And uh, at the moment, uh, I'm remembering Heroku only as a platform as a service. And... Uh, what is infrastructure as a service? Okay. So infrastructure as a service is like I didn't know about yeah. infrastructure. As a it's okay. All right. Let's move on to something else. Have you ever written a SOSL query? SOSL query. I have written very few SOSL queries. What was the scenario where you needed to write the SOSL query? So, like uh, I, I have in my case, I use SOSL, uh, SOSL query to uh, search uh, some fields like name, uh, name, and phone from multiple objects at the time, like contact, uh, opportunities. So through SOSL query, we can process on multiple records at a time. So in that scenario, I use that. What was the business requirement there? So the business requirement are basically, um, there are uh, three input boxes. Uh, I have to, you know, build using LWC. So over UI, there are three input boxes and uh, 
whenever UI, <clears throat> whenever user comes over UI and search on the on the specific uh like in filter on the specific name, if it matches the name which are available in database, that will fetch record over there. So there are searching logic used over there. Okay. There are two Apex classes. Okay. Okay. One is with sharing and one is without sharing. Okay. If I am calling a class which is with sharing from a class which is without sharing, then what will be the context of this class which was with sharing earlier? Okay. So uh, like, like the previous one class is the with sharing. And if we call into without sharing, it cha it doesn't doesn't change the you know their genuine behaviors. Like if the it is with sharing and calling without sharing, it, it is still shared to their specific users to whom it are shared earlier. So it does not impact uh, if we call it inside without sharing. Then why do we even have without sharing when by default behavior is uh, without sharing? Okay, like you are asking okay. if, I, if I do not mention anything with sharing or without sharing with the class, yes. then it is considered without. as without sharing, right? Yes. yes. Why we need to have without sharing? Why we explicitly mention without sharing? Do we actually need to mention without sharing at all? Like, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure about, but I have uh, like one instance in my mind to say, like if there are situations, to, you know, multiple uh methods are there. We uh, in some you know some class I want to uh <laughs> some class <laughs> sorry some class are declared as a without with sharing, and in that way uh if we want some class as a without sharing, I can we can use. It's a little mess up, but uh, yeah, I see. Even if you don't answer, if you will not be able to put it in the right format, interview will not, uh, you know, accept that answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Why do we use protected um, uh, access modifier? What is protected as access modifier? Okay. So protected access modifier is somewhere. Uh, if we want to. Uh, like in, if we talk about private pub, public, it is, you know, somewhere data private, which are like method are private, which are not shared to other class. So in the protected case, if there are some credentials, which are very important, we, we keep as a, uh, like we provide a shield after using protected modifier. That's what I understand at the moment. Oh, this will not be sufficient to answer. He'll say that why not private then if you want to protect it actually. Yes, we can private. Yes, but the main difference between private and protected, I didn't remember at the moment. All right. I am going to stop the recording.